This is Geometry Unit 6, Lesson 1, Prooflets. This lesson is a review lesson of how to do the basic theorems for proofs, how they should be set up and how we use them. Because guess what? Proofs are back. So let's take a look at these little prooflets to figure out what theorem is being applied. So let's look at the first picture we have here. We have angle DAE is congruent to angle BCF. Let's see, DAE is this angle, is congruent to BCF, which is this angle right here. And we also know that angle BAE here is congruent to angle DCF, which is there. Now, that's what we know for sure. What we are trying to prove is that angle DAB, DAB, this angle right here, is congruent to angle BCD, BCD, which is this angle right here. Okay, so what this is telling me is we have two smaller angles, then we want to make a bigger angle. What are we going to have to do? Well, we're going to have to add them. So what your addition postulate is going to have to look like is this. You start with your given. Angle DAE is congruent to angle BCF. And angle BAE is congruent to angle DCF. Those are your given statements. Now, if I want to add them together, I have to add down my columns. If I take DAE plus BAE, what angle do I get? I get this plus this gives me angle DAB. Then if I take BCF and add DCF to it, BCF, DCF added together, I get angle BCD. And that's the addition postulate. So when you're going from smaller uh, values, whether they're angles or segments, to larger values, uh, you have to add. Make sure that you have two equal quantities to add. So equal, equal, add the pieces. And that's the addition postulate. And that's what I used uh, on the given there to do that. All right, let's try the next one. For this problem, we have the same picture, but this time DEFB is a line right here where DF, this piece right here, is congruent to EB. Those pieces are congruent. Now, I'm trying to prove that DE, this piece, is congruent to FB, which is this piece. That's what I'm trying to prove. Okay, so from what we're given, all we have is on that line, DEFB, the pieces DF and EB are congruent. That's all I know. So I am going from a big piece, I want actually a smaller piece. Well, if you want to use get a big piece and end up with a smaller piece, you have to subtract something. All right, so if I have DF here and I want to subtract something to end up with DE, what's got to go? Well, you'd have to take EF away. And over here, EB, I'd actually, to end up with BF, I'd have to take EF away from there too. So we actually have to subtract EF from both sides of that. So remember, you have to say that the piece is equal that you're subtracting. So we have to put in the reflexive. EF is congruent to EF by reflexive. And that way, we have two segments that we can subtract. DF minus EF is DE. DF minus EF is DE. And then we take EB, subtract EF, and we end up with FB. So we use subtraction on statements 1 and 2. I took this statement minus this statement to get this statement. Let's look at this next one. We are given that AE is perpendicular to DEFB. All right, now what does perpendicular mean? Perpendicular means they make right angles. So if I have AE, I actually have a right angle here, and I have a right angle there. And then I also have that CF is perpendicular to DEFB, so I have perpendicular right angle there, and also a right angle there. Okay, so what I'm trying to prove is that angle DEA is congruent to angle BFC. Okay, 
Well, what kind of angles were they again? Well, they're perpendicular lines. They form right angles. And what do we know about right angles? Well, didn't we prove that they're 90 degrees, so they must be congruent? Yeah. So we can put that together in one big statement. All right, so starting with our givens, we are given that AE is perpendicular to DEFB. And we are also given that CF is perpendicular to DEFB, which was given. Okay, so all we know is we have perpendiculars. So we have to use the definition of perpendicular. So if we have a perpendicular line, that means that AED is a right angle and BFC is a right angle, or DEA, however you want to let it here. And so they're both right angles, so they're congruent. So we can say angle DEA is congruent to angle BFC. Now for a reason, we have to put down why we can say they're angles and that they're congruent. Well, if they're perpendicular, we know perpendicular lines form right angles that are congruent. Okay, so the perpendicular gives you the right angles and all right angles are congruent. So we kind of combine that in here. So you have to have both parts in there, that you have right angles and that they are congruent. And we proved we want to prove DEA is congruent to BFC. So we're good there. Now, let's say we are given that AB is parallel to CD. All right, so remember the little arrow means parallel. And that DEFB is a line. So if these are parallel, that makes DEFB a transversal. Okay, now that should set off alarm bells in your head. All right, we just did a unit on parallel lines and transversals. So that tells me, well, I'm going to create angles that are either going to be congruent or supplementary. So let's take a look at our given values and see what angle we're trying to prove. We have the two lines here. DEFB is the transversal. I'm trying to prove that ABF, ABF, this angle right here, is congruent to angle CDE, CDE, which is this angle right here. Okay, so if A, B, and C, D are the parallel lines, would B, F, uh, e, B, e, D, E, F, B a transversal, what kind of angles are these? Aren't those alternate interior angles? Yeah. What do we know about alternate interior angles? They are congruent. So angle A, B, F is congruent to angle C, D, E because if lines are parallel, Alternate interior angles are congruent. All right, so we knew the lines are parallel, so we can automatically say the alternate interior angles are congruent. So this angle would be congruent to that angle. And we're good. That's what we wanted to prove. All right, now this time we are trying to prove that lines are parallel. So we are given that AEB and CD are lines, and CEF is another line intersecting them. So that's the transversal, supposedly. And we know that FEB and ECD are congruent. So that's all we know. All right, now, to prove lines parallel, you have to prove stuff about the angles. We have these two angles right here. Do we know anything about them? What kind of angles would they be? Well, if these are parallel lines, they would be corresponding angles um because they are in the same place on the parallel lines so well if the lines are parallel so if the corresponding angles are congruent then the lines would be parallel correct well aren't they congruent right there yeah all right so if we have the two lines aeb and cd and transversal cef where angle feb is congruent to angle ecd that's given, we can say that the two lines AB and CD are parallel because um, <clears throat> if corresponding angles are congruent, then lines are parallel. Because the corresponding angles are congruent, that proves that these lines are parallel. 
All right. So this time we have a diagram where AEB and CEF are lines. All that is telling me is that I have two lines and they have a common point E. Well, if they have a common point E, that implies to me that they intersect at point E. So that should keep us, uh, give us a hint of where we're going with this. So we have AEB and CEF are lines. We are trying to prove that AEF, AEF, this angle right here, is congruent to angle CEB, CEB, which is right here. Okay, what kind of angles are those? Well, if these are intersecting lines, aren't these vertical angles? And what do we know about vertical angles? They are congruent. So that means that angle AEF is congruent to angle CEB. So remember, you have to say where the vertical lines came from and that they're congruent, or vertical angles, excuse me, came from and that they're congruent. So, intersecting lines form vertical angles that are congruent. Okay, so we had to know where the angles came from and why they're congruent. And that's it. All right, last one. We are given that AEBG is a line and AEF is congruent to GBF. So that's what we are given. We are trying to prove that angle FEB and FBE, FBE, these two angles right here, are congruent. So we need to know something about the angles we have and how they relate to the angles we want. All right, so if we are given that AEBG is a line, and angle AEF is congruent to angle GBF, if we are given that. We are trying to get something about FEB, this angle right here. How does it relate to AEF right here? Well, if since AEBG is a line, these two angles together make a line. So what do we know about them? They are supplementary, okay? They add up to 180 degrees, so that means that angle AEF is supplementary to angle FEB. The reason for that is adjacent angles that make a line are supplementary. Okay, now let's look at GBF here. Isn't that also supplementary to FBE here? So for the same reason, couldn't I also say that angle GBF is supplementary to angle FBE for the same reason? So I'm just going to add the given, or excuse me, the statement to this one because it's the same reason. Okay, so we know that this angle supplementary to this one, this angle supplementary to this one, and we were also given that these two angles are congruent. So if these two angles are congruent, what do we know about their supplements? Their supplements are congruent. So that means angle FEB is congruent to angle FBE. Since these two angles right here are congruent, Whatever supplementary to them will also be congruent. That's my reason. If two angles are congruent, their supplements are congruent. Okay, and there we go. So those are some of the basic theorem um, that we needed to use in order to do proofs. So we are going to be working with proofs later on in this unit quite a bit. So you need to remember how to do and apply these theorems. They're going to come in very handy in this unit.